guys, Karen here. Welcome to Little Art Talks. So you want to make more art and for whatever reason you're not making as much as you would like. So in today's video I'm going to be discussing four books that will help you, inspire you, encourage you to make more. First up is Daily Rituals by Mason Curry. One of the most important factors in having and sustaining a productive lifestyle is managing your time. And having a set schedule makes the day-to-day -day decisions a little bit more automatic, leaving more brain juice for the good stuff. This book isn't just about artists, but about 161 of the greatest minds in all fields, novelists, poets, playwrights, painters, philosophers, scientists, mathematicians. This book describes their self-imposed daily rituals and how they get so much done. Some are as expected, but most have a little bit of a quirk. For example, Pablo Picasso, who always throughout his life went to bed late and woke up late. He would shut himself in the studio by 2 p.m. and work until dusk. Breaking for dinner with Ferdinand, he hardly spoke. A bit of a hypochondriac, he drank only mineral water or milk, and he ate vegetables, fish, rice pudding, and grapes. It's a pretty fun book, it's pretty humorous, and unexpectedly inspiring. Number two is Studio Life. Rituals, collections, tools, and observations on the artistic pra practice process. On the artistic process by Sarah Trigg. Whether you're an artist or not, people tend to arrange their environment and collect or display objects that are meaningful to them. And this book is a perfect reminder of how weird those objects really can be for artists. This book covers a ridiculous number of artists and in interviews about their workspace and practice of artists all over America. Just to name a few, there's Jim Shaw, Dana Schultz, Nick Cave, John Baldessari, the author, Sarah Triggs, is an artist, writer, photographer herself who lives and works in Brooklyn, New York. One thing I'll quickly note after reading some reviews, the title might be a little bit misleading because it seems like maybe it's a how-to book of how to arrange your materials or organize your workspace. It's definitely not. I want to point that out because there was a couple comments in like reviews about how they didn't really understand what the book was before getting into it, so I wanted to let you know about that. In the author's words, it's a photographic and written archive of artists' curiosities. She limits and categorizes the images to mascots, collected objects, makeshift tools, rituals, and residue. A sixth category, habitat, was added shortly thereafter. It's interesting how she sets these parameters for her project. She visits almost 200 artists and 100 are included in this book, and I think the rest are on her website goldminerproject.com. As you can imagine, a hundred artists in this tiny book, it's pretty thin. Um, each artist only has one to three pages and most are photographs, so it's definitely not a ton of writing. And you don't know a ton about the artist's practice itself if you do recognize some of the artists or you go off onto the internet or something to look up these artists and learn a little bit more about them before reading about their studio space, I think it makes it a little bit more meaningful because if you just don't know very much about it, it can seem very random. <laughs> they do have an artist index in the very back which talks a little bit about each artist's biography, so maybe if they put it in the beginning of each page or something like that, it would make a little bit more sense, but I guess you can just flip back and forth or something like that. It's an interesting book if you like to learn about the weird ideas or personalities of these different artists. It's a good reminder to take care of the space where we create things because that's what inspires us and motivates us and maybe give you a good excuse to finally buy that thing you've been eyeing in the flea market that you really want but you really don't need. Number three is Living and Sustaining a Creative Life, Essays by 40 Working Artists and it is edited by Sharon Loudon. It is pretty much what it sounds like, essays by 40 different artists. This is such a great book for anyone who is interested in having a real 
sort of working artist career, I guess. And there's artists from all kinds of different backgrounds. Some make money off of their work, some are teachers, some have other jobs. They are all over the spectrum in terms of where they are in their careers, in their life. Some are older, some are younger. So I think whoever you are, you can identify with at least some of these artists. Definitely if you are sort of a college student or you just graduated and you're trying to figure out what to do next, how you balance everything and still create work, this is a great book to have and refer to. If you are serious about making art, I highly recommend this book and I think anyone can sort of gain something out of it. It's an honest, humbling reminder of how the artist persists and hopefully it rubs a little bit off onto you. Finally, I have Draw It With Your Eyes Closed, The Art of the Art Assignment, and this is published by Paper Monument. This is kind of similar to the previous book where there's a bunch of different submissions, but not full-on essays. This book is one that actually contains assignments and ideas of what to do if you're looking for that, or if you're just looking for something to just start making something, anything, really, just to get that spark. It's also very nostalgic for anyone who's gone to art school, I think. It's a mixed collection of contributions from artists and teachers as they talk about the best art assignments they've given or received or heard of. Some are more narrative, others are more like a set of instructions, some are more serious, and others are pretty humorous. It's not so much about the art that's made from these assignments, but more about the prompt's attempt to elicit a more critical response from the participants, questioning how or why or where art comes from in this contemporary space. Definitely a great choice for any students and teachers out there. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope that gives you a good enough description for you to decide if it's something you're interested in or not. I know it is kind of ironic that I made this video after not posting a video for almost two weeks. I'm really sorry I got sick and busy and yeah. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time.